Now, yet again, the media mob is caught spreading another round of completely fake news because remember, you know, all the hysterical, reckless coverage last summer after Park Police. Remember, they cleared out protesters near Lafayette Square in D.C. Donald Trump, he was accused of removing protesters for a photo op in front of St. John's Church. Well, just like clockwork, it turns out that narrative was an utter and complete lie. Trump, Russia, that was a lie. Ukraine quid pro quo, that was Joe, that wasn't Donald Trump. Now, we were misled about the origins, as we now know, of COVID and the Wuhan lab on vir virology. Uh, that, of course, the left wing media lied about that, said, you know, most people, it's an amazing thing, most people guilty of spreading lies spreading hoaxes and conspiracy theories. They are the ones out there accusing everyone else of being guilty of that which they are, you know, practicing daily. Now tonight, new information, internal watchdog report finding that Park Police did not clear demonstrators for President Trump, but instead to install anti-scale fencing in response to attacks on federal property. Now just listen to the pain of fake news reporter, I guess his name is Ken uh, Kendall Alaney you know, or something, whatever, from MSDNC, having to deliver the news to Chucky e. Todd, who will never be Tim Russert. Take a look. You know, the narrative took hold and it was widely reported across the mainstream media that Barr ordered this thing to clear the park for Trump. And that's not right. what happened, according to this independent inspector general report, Chuck. Yeah. Park was ordered cleared. Trump wanted to go, but the two were not connected. That's basically, it seems like, what we're learning with this report. That's All right. The bottom line. Yeah, remember these fake news headlines last summer? NPR, peaceful protesters tear gas to clear the way for Trump church photo op. New York toilet paper times, quote, how Trump's idea for a photo op led to havoc in a park. You know, we often ask and expose what the media, uh, what the mob and the media gets wrong. But the real question we should be asking, do they get anything right? It doesn't seem so. Here to react to all of this, he is the host of the number one show, Sunday Night Here, on the Fox News Channel, Life, Liberty, Levin. Now, this new book is coming out in a couple of weeks. It's on Hannity.com. It's on Amazon.com. I have had an opportunity to read a number of the chapters. This book it provides the roadmap to save this country. It is that profound. I call him the great one, Mark Levin. Sir, a lot of ground for you to cover tonight. Congrats on the book. I can't wait. It's in bookstores soon. Thank you. You're very, very kind. I need to spend my four minutes and 37 seconds on this because it's important. <laughs> the, media spent, the media spent two or three weeks lying about Donald Trump. You know, what should we expect, really, from the American media? It's not the media. It's the Democrat Party. These people are dressed up as journalists. That's all it is, whether it's CNN or MSNBC. You saw Chuck Todd who has an IQ of about a fifth grader. He can't decide what kind of haircut the guy wants. Donald Trump is the most abused president in American history. Now, let's see what happens here. I have the report. They say protests began in and around Lafayette Park on May 29th, May 30th uh, of 2020. The United States uh, Park Police and U.S. Secret Service established a unified command. Forty-nine U.S. Park Police were injured. And by the way, over 50 Secret Service were injured. The president and his family had to be taken to the nuclear bunker. They had to clear the way out to get in non-climbing fences. You had a historic church that was burned. And these clowns, including Todd and his network, talk about a mostly peaceful protest. There's your insurrection, baby. There's your incitement for an insurrection, baby. Now, should we be uh, surprised at the media in this country? No. You got to remember that during the Holocaust, led by The New York Times, they covered up the Holocaust. So, of course, they're going to lie about what took place in Lafayette Park. Now, let's go down memory lane. Joe Biden, always the ambulance chaser street politician. About Trump, he tweets, you're using the American military against the American people. He tear gassed peaceful protesters and fired rubber bullets. Liar. Joe Biden the next day, when 100,000 Americans died because of his incompetent leadership, this president golfed. When Americans peacefully protest outside the White House, this president tear gassed them for a photo op. Liar. Kamala Harris, Donald Trump just tear gassed peaceful protesters for a photo op. Liar. Chuck Schumer, one of the most grotesque politicians to ever walk on two feet on the planet.
How low can this president go? President Trump ordered federal authorities to fire tear gas on peaceful protesters. Liar. The next day, same thing. Pelosi, same thing. Adam Schiff, same thing. General Jim Mattis, oh, the great General Mattis. When I joined the military some 50 years ago, I swore an oath to support and defend the Constitution. Never did I dream that troops taking that same oath would be ordered under any circumstance to violate the constitutional rights of their fellow citizens, much less to provide a bizarre photo app for the elected commander-in-chief. Liar! General Martin Dempsey, an Obama hat. America's military, our sons and daughters, it goes on and on and on. The Washington Compost, the New York Slimes, NPR, the Daily Beast. Now, you know what? This story that shows them all to be liars will last about 30 seconds, and then we go on to tomorrow. And as you were pointing out earlier in the show, Sean, they have lied about so much, so many conspiracy theories, so many collusions about Donald Trump. It is awful. Now, I want to take the remaining two minutes and 17 seconds I have to say this, and I mean this in all seriousness, deadly serious. Joe Biden, because of what he's done with the pipeline with Russia, because he, what he's doing with TikTok and others with communist China, the signals he's sending despite his tough talk, Joe Biden's going to get us in a war. I'm convinced of this. I'm sad to say he wants to spend $6 trillion dollars. He's out of his mind, but he wants to keep flat defense spending, keep flat defense spending when China is completely out of control and they're preparing to invade Taiwan. That's number one. Number two, Joe Biden is going to create not a recession, but at some point a depression, maybe not on his watch, but he's certainly dragging us down that path. Even Deutsche Bank, in the strongest terms, has warned about unprecedented inflation. And I want the American people to understand what that means. That means the value of the currency goes down, the value of your paycheck, your pension, your savings, everything goes down, but prices go way, way up. We saw this early in the Reagan administration. We had two very tough years to try and kill off inflation. This man, Joe Biden, has taken the Trump recovery and he's turning it into the Herbert Hoover, Franklin Roosevelt depression. You better keep an eye on this guy, folks. Because it's not that he's out of his mind, it's that he's out of his league. That's it. American Marxism, Amazon.com, Hannity.com, Life, Liberty, and Levin every Sunday night, 8 p.m. right here on the Fox News Channel. Mark Levin, great one. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.